Good evening, and welcome to this episode of Just Make Gay. Hello, this is the second time that we're filming this episode of Just Make Game because our GoPro here, this little bastard, decided to eat all our footage the first time around and corrupt the SD card. So he's hoping it works this time. Um, if it doesn't, I'm going to throw it against the wall. So it's hard to say that you failed at something, but this is what I'm going to say this month. I've failed to get that intro animation finished. I worked hard, I worked late nights, I worked on weekends, but in the end I just wasn't able to get it complete. I still have five scenes left to do, so I'm really close to finished, but I can't proudly proclaim, I did it! I am the greatest winner of animation, it's finished! I have learned a lesson in doing this though. It's important to set yourself deadlines and to try and work your butt off to meet those deadlines. If I hadn't set myself the goal of getting the intro animation done by the end of March, I don't think I would have done nearly as much work on it as I have done. When you're working for someone else and they go, Hayley, I need those TPS reports done by the end of the month, you get it done, otherwise there are going to be repercussions. You might get a warning, you might have to go into a meeting with your boss explaining why it's not finished, but there's this fear of losing your job that spurs you on and makes sure you get the work done. When you work for yourself, you don't have this, and it's both a bit of a blessing and a bit of a curse. You could lounge about all day not doing anything, and there's no fear of losing your job. But if you do that all the time, your project's never going to get finished. You need to give yourself deadlines and find a way to make sure you're accountable. That's why I love all of you that watch Just Make Game. I am accountable to you. I knew all throughout this month that if I didn't meet my deadline, I would have to sit in this seat and tell you all I failed, that I didn't get it done. And that made me work so much harder than I otherwise would have. As it turns out, I still fell short of my objective, but I'm really proud of the amount of work that I did get done this month. So I don't feel too much shame in sitting here and telling you all that I fell short. So I don't have a boss that I need to impress and to make proud of me. I just have to impress myself and be proud of myself. And I think I did that this month and it's a really good feeling. So if you're working on your own project, make sure you set deadlines for yourself. And if you have tried your best and you're proud of what you've accomplished, then don't feel too bad if you have to shift those goalposts a little bit. If you don't set deadlines, you'll be lost in this haze of working, but not really getting things done. This month I've been having the absolute time of my life coding various systems that are in turn influenced by other systems that in turn influence other systems that in turn influence other systems that don't exist yet. In terms of things you can actually see on the screen, uh, now you can find weapons and items in the level, you can pick them up and then use them. A bunch of the underlying systems that the god will use. Yeah, remember the god? That fella? I need them to feed me. But a lot of the systems that he will use to influence the character and the level and everything, they all exist. And they all have um, sort of a function that influences something else. Basically, at the moment, the god is essentially a routine that looks through a spreadsheet of variables and then doesn't really do anything with the information, but eventually it will and it'll start changing those variables itself and then you know he can get angry at you and things like that many many systems in the game are basically like a long step through of different checks so interconnected variables all together influencing each other in some way so for example if you're hit by an enemy it might go oh how hard were you hit does it take you know more than half your health away if it did has it been a long period of time between your last fight and this is the god currently in a bored state if so perhaps use a percentage chance to set the gods mood to amused and then that changes a bunch of things and it goes from there it's pretty fun to play around with the sort of interconnectedness of it when you're when i'm coding things up but i must admit it does get a bit tedious where you know i'm, I'm modifying one system and that means it influences a bunch of other things so you gotta be sort of mindful of the big spider web that you've created it's just so many systems all together. I think we've officially hit the sort of dreaded halfway point with Commandment. This exact point is sort of where, for, for me personally, that the excitement of all the cool things that you're going to do and all the fun sort of excitement of, oh, I'm making a game, kind of disappears. And now you're just down to the 9 to 5 slog section. This is where you start thinking about all these other cool games that you could be making instead. Here I made a handy dandy chart to illustrate it. 
This is the point I think that most people um, sort of bin their current project, chuck it away, and then move on to something more interesting. The problem is, though, is that that new interesting project, once you're about halfway into it, will quickly become boring as well, and then you'll move on to something else. And you'll just end up with about 500 half-finished projects lying around. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes it is good to go sort of iterating through a bunch of projects, because then you get new ideas, you try out new things, and you get better at, you know, the different aspects that you did, so better at coding, better at art, things like that. But I think there's something to be said for actually completing games. I remember the exact same point in development in Bannerman. There was, a, I think, about the same point in about about a year or so in, and it quickly went from, oh yay, look how cool this is! I love the combat system. To I hate this game. I I, I hate making levels. I hate this rotoscoping thing that I decided to do. Why did I decide to animate like this? But eventually, you sort of push past it, and once you push past, I find that you end up in uh, sort of a more exciting place again because you're closer to release and. Now you're thinking sort of in different ways, less about, oh, I've got to get every little thing finished, but more, oh, look, I've got to, you know, finish up this sort of thing so then I can put it on Steam and then I've got to get ready for post-release and then I can move on to something else. And of course, and then, you know, then you can get paid too. That's always nice. So my advice would be if you're currently working on a game and you're sitting at about this halfway point and you're thinking of moving on to another project, finish this one. Even if it's not a commercial release that you're planning, it's just like a little thing you're going to put up on Ichio or Game Jolt or whatever, it's finish this one and then move on to the next one. Unless of course you're making a massively multiplayer online RPG by just yourself, then in which case you should probably bin that. Age of Funding for this episode of Just Make Game was provided by Vin Hill, Tyler Heyer, Raf Bluffin, Martin Schoenborg, Lurkin McClurkin, Ivan Makarevich, Diego Blumard, Connor Bowen, Bumper Car Studios, Ben Kersnowski, Benjamin Ramsey, Alan Pask, and viewers like you. Alright guys, that's it for this month. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you next month for another episode of Just Make Game. Good evening.